Hello and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you the new features of our Baramundi version 2021 R2. In this case, we have four big topics. First of all, we're going to talk about Windows Autopilot. We enable you to enroll your Windows devices right out of the box. Secondly, I'm going to show you some improvements with the Microsoft Update Management. There we have a summary view at the logical groups, which enables you to have a detailed overview over your entire environment. Third one is the do not disturb mode. It's an easy way to allow your users to make the Baramani management agent to shut up for a while. And last but not least, I show you some enhancements in the Argus cockpit. Let's start with Microsoft Autopilot. With the Microsoft Autopilot feature, you have the possibility to easily get devices into your Baramundi management right out of the box. So deploying the endpoint, the Windows 11 or Windows 10 endpoint to your user, start it up and right away you have it in your environment in Baramundi. All of the Autopilot process happens in the background, so the user will not even realize what's going on. Just make sure the endpoint itself has an internet connection and so he's able to enroll himself through the Microsoft servers into your Baramundi environment. And to make this happening, we have to make a little pre-configuration in Baramundi. So after you configured your Microsoft credentials, just go to the configuration section, automatic registration, Microsoft Autopilot. In here, simply add your Microsoft credentials in the required fields to make a connection between your Microsoft and your Baramundi environment. These steps were necessary to establish a trust between the two environments. So after we did that, we can easily use the update device button up here. And then going to environment, we do see a new endpoint appeared synchronized from the Microsoft environment into Baramundi. And from here, I will jump into my virtual machine to show you what it looks like on the other end. Now over here on the virtual machine. So that's the moment what it would look like out of the box. Windows 10 is booting up in our case and followed by a series of loading bars. And that's the initial configuration of the endpoint itself. And after that, we're going to be asked a couple of questions, like the first one here, what is the region? So in our case, I'm going to choose Germany, in this case, Deutschland, confirming. Now the endpoint itself establishes a network connection. And in this case, it connects to the regional Microsoft server to enroll the device based on your pre-configuration on Microsoft. This takes a while, he's checking for updates as well. But right after that, we're going to be welcomed to our company environment. Welcome to Baramoni Software. For sure, it's just my case that we're going to be welcomed to Baramoni Software. It is our test environment here in Baramundi. In your case, it's going to be your company name and for sure your configured language and configuration. So let's continue logging in with our user. We're going to be forwarded to a terms of use page, which is a template. So you already see there is a template um, name company here and you can configure it as you need it, like a different kind of logo in the upper right corner or uh, different text and you can switch languages for sure as well. We accept it and then we wait for the configuration. And this, as we know it, takes a while and jumping right into the hello screen. And still the Windows endpoint is going to be configured in the background as we know it with a normal installation sitting in front of it. We did it. So that's the desktop of a Windows 10 machine. The first configuration steps were made. We 
no all these usual windows pop-ups with the network configuration but it is available in the management already and it started up right here in the taskbar we still wait for our barramundi management agent which will appear magically so that's one of the main points from the autopilot feature the management agent right out of the box right from scratch and then we can right away use the management agent as we know it so jumping into the log file shows us where this endpoint is enrolled and you do know the baramundi scheduling behavior so if you pre-configured some jobs to run right from scratch automatically assigned to the endpoints this would now happen in our case i'm going to the baramundi management center on my server itself manually and going to assign a job to this endpoint and here we go that's the hardware and software inventory job assigned from our baramundi management server and that's the magic so the user only needs to enter his windows credentials to log into your company network and the agent is going to be installed automatically the device is enrolled and you're ready to assign all needed jobs to the endpoint even if it just came out of the box and back to the baramuni management server we have a new successfully enrolled endpoint last contact a minute ago opening the device with the well-known mini inventory from our management agent with all the required data from the new endpoint we're going to assign a new job the hardware and software inventory job and it works like you know it from the LAN endpoints as well so right out of the box easily assign the job and it's going to be executed on the Windows endpoint after a while the job steps turn into green and we do have the result right away in the Baramuni Management Center, like for example here, the software inventory information. With the Microsoft Autopilot feature, you have the possibility to easily get the devices into your Baramundi Management right out of the box. So deploying the endpoint, the Windows 11 or Windows 10 endpoint to your user start it up and right away you have it in your environment in Baramundi and let's continue with the Baramundi update management so we added two new features to the update management basically it's the functionality to see all the missing updates on a group if you open it in a tab and secondly you're able to see the update status of an entire group based on their update profiles so let us see what this looks like so in our case we do have the group already opened as a tab and brings us to the microsoft update profiles here you do see two of my profiles in this group that's the windows server update profile and the windows endpoint key accounts so my conditions are fulfilled in the windows server profile right hand side we do have a 100 percent successful compliant rate here on the other hand the windows endpoints are 100 percent non-compliant because it's only one machine but it does not fulfill my update profile conditions if you're more interested in only a summary view instead of this entire list view with details about every single update simply check the overview microsoft update this gives you a summary view of the missing updates on this endpoint. We're going to have a closer look into that. So clicking on non-compliant, this one device affected, brings us to a closer look into the Microsoft Update Devices section with a already configured filter up here. We do see the one non-compliant device here. Scrolling a little bit to the right, shows us the missing security updates, other updates, last update inventory, and so on. Basically, you can use this um, devices section here uh, manually as well by switching the filter functions up here or simply by selecting the affected update profiles 
in your selected group. In this case, it shows us the server, which has the server update profile and was compliant based on my conditions. And my endpoint, which does not fulfill it, is not compliant because there are updates missing. So that was the profile summary view. But back to the group itself, you can jump to the Microsoft Update Update section to have a view of all endpoints in your group and if you want to, including the subfolder, so even groups in the group. In our case, with our two endpoints here, we see there are a bunch of updates missing on my client endpoint and also on my server endpoint. A little bit further down, same view as we had on the endpoint itself. Some products are blocked and other updates are already installed on my machines. Imagine the list is growing and growing the more devices you have. So there is a powerful feature up here. For example, we're not interested in the installed patches, only the blocked, the deferred, and the missing ones, or even just the missing ones in my environment. And to go a little bit further down, maybe it's more important to see based on a classification critical updates, for example. So we do have in shared services one endpoint with a critical update missing. So we have to do something here. As you're used to in our environment management center, you can easily grab a list like we do have here and export everything to Excel if you need so to uh, report to other department or wherever you need the data. And again, you can have a closer look into the specific endpoint simply by double clicking it. Brings us to the endpoint inventory Microsoft updates. So we do have a bunch of updates listed here. A few are installed, the other ones are gray, and then there are a few missing, the red ones. So they need to be installed. The gray ones are blocked. In this case, you can check why on the detail view scrolling down because of the update profile and the product Silverlight. So those patches are blocked. In our case, the first 20 are missing on the endpoint. So we do need to run a um, Microsoft update installation job on this specific endpoint. And back to our Baramuni management center, we do now see the do not disturb mode on this specific endpoint is active and it will end in 60 minutes, in my case at 3.27 p.m. So that's the point of view for you as a Baramuni Management Center user, as an admin, to see if you're able to run jobs right now or not. So what happens if we want to run a job on this endpoint? Let's do this by assigning a new job. For example, I want to install Office 2019 going to assign the job. The scheduler grabs the job target. Steps will be determined during execution. And now we have the feedback. This device is in the do not disturb mode, so we can't run this job at the moment. From a user perspective, we do have the possibility to activate it using the Baramuni management agent itself. We have a new option here activate the do not disturb mode. The time is pre-configured by you as an administrator. So it's in our case, the one hour we configured in the configuration section in the management center. If we do activate it, we can double check it and see it with the tray icon here for the do not disturb mode. So this is very useful to activate it if you're going to have a presentation or a remote session with one of your colleagues to um, not have this trade notification window in the bottom right corner informing you about an um, ongoing job or a job needed to be executed on your device. And again, last but not least, there is one feature more, the so-called do not disturb mode. So I think you can already imagine what that means, like hanging up this little thingy in a hotel room. The do not disturb mode can be accessed for the user themselves to activate a silent management agent to not be disturbed. 
From a configuration point of view, just go to Configuration Server Management Agent and activate the Do Not Disturb mode and configure the time how long it will be in this mode. In my case, it's 60 minutes, one hour. The user can jump into this Do Not Disturb mode. And not only if it's active or not, you can add a new column when the Do Not Disturb mode will end. In this case, also in minutes and the timestamp. This mode gives the user the power to have a quiet Baramundi management agent for a configurable time and use a Baramundi management center administrator can easily double check if the mode is active and when it will end on the device. So that's the configuration point of view on our endpoints. In the overview, we can easily check what the status of this do not disturb mode is at the moment. Scrolling a little bit further down, here in the Baramuni Management Agent section, we have the do not disturb mode. This device, it's not active at the moment. If it would be active, we have a timestamp when the do not disturb mode will end. So our endpoint here is German, that's why it's German, but basically that's the do not disturb mode with a timestamp when it will be deactivated. So in the background, I already deactivated the do not disturb mode on this machine because as a user, I was already done with my presentation and I disabled it. So as soon as the scheduler, after a matter of a few minutes, starts this job target again, it will proceed as you want to. Okay, in my case, it was a failed job, but anyhow, the do not disturb mode was deactivated. I'm now going to activate it again to show you another feature, which basically is a nice overview for you as a user in the management center. So going to your environment, to a group, for example, you can add a new column for the do not disturb mode, for example. Say OK, and you see if it's active or not. Now I would like to show you two new features in our Argus cockpit. That is the Argus new reporting feature and also the Delta view for universal dynamic groups. Reporting. Reporting is important. Reporting is a tool for several roles. Like example, if you are the CISO from a company, you need to be prepared for an audit and you need data, a lot of data. And Argus Cockpit Reporting provides you with that. And on the other hand, you could be the role as a partner, as a managed service provider where you have SLAs to your customer, which need to be fulfilled and you have to check and prove this. And also therefore you can use the Argus cockpit reporting. As one big benefit of Argus reporting or Argus itself always was to um, track multiple Baramuni management servers at once. And also in the reporting function here, you have the possibility to do so. And secondly, it's a historical view. Like you can jump back in time to see when a change happened in your environment. And therefore you can use the August reporting. It's a Power BI template. So we recommend to use Microsoft Power BI as a tool to access the data. And therefore we already provided this template, which you do see here. But that's not it because it's just an API you can use can easily or on your own create further templates as you need them for whatever audit of whatever report you do need in your environment. In this video, we have a closer look into our report. Our template has different sheets, which we're going to talk about. And uh, each sheet is divided in a few sections, like the dynamic groups you would like to have a closer look into in the upper left, and also the date, so the date range you would like to configure to have a closer um, view into this time frame. We have a graph of visualization about the historical change of those dynamic groups and the list of endpoints in your group. So as an example, we jump into another sheet in our template, the security critical update sheet. Here we do have a view over the critical updates missing in your environment over time. Um, this is a really important report to look at, but don't worry about this graph here. 
we have demo data here to show you a full report, but probably in your environment, it would look a little bit different. But as we had before, you can configure the Paramount environment, the server in the upper left, the time frame, and the amount of critical updates needed, which I would like to have a closer look into. And maybe it's important to know which operating system in detail it is, which is affected or is part of this report sheet of this group. And the graph is an easy way to compare timestamps. Like here on the 26th of August, we had four devices in this group. And on Saturday, only one device was remaining, meaning one device needed critical updates. Yeah, and this is the power of reporting in Power BI. You have the detail view, which endpoint was affected on the right side and different kind of sheets in our template, like also the Windows security services here, or even operating systems. It helps you, for example, to tell your customer, like we did an operating system rollout. We updated a bunch of endpoints from the version 19041 to the latest version in a certain time frame. Those few sheets were only uh, a few examples what you could do with the reporting functionality of Argus. And I think the limit is just a matter of your imagination to report whatever you need. And now let's get back to our Argus cockpit interface. You already know this view. Those are universal dynamic groups synchronized to Argus cockpit. So with a threshold configured to highlight certain groups like this one, firewall needs attention. So we have a closer look into this dynamic group. Now, the new feature is the Delta view, but the view itself changed from the current devices in this firewall needs attention group with the trend section and the Delta view. So first of all, in the current tab, we do see all endpoints in this specific dynamic group right now. So the trends, the feature from the last version shows us, us a historical view and the Delta is the new feature. Basically you do see the same timeline as in trends where you can check the, the count of devices in this group in a specific timestamp like here between the 28th and the 29th of September. The main benefit of the Delta is to compare those two timestamps with each other. Easily select those two and you see one device was added in between those two timestamps. And if we scroll further down, we have to add more items per page. This little icon here, the plus, shows us which device it in specifically which device it was, which was added to this dynamic group, meaning it needs firewall attention. And then just open the device, go to the current overview of this device. You can easily open it in your Baromony Management Center to see what happened or why the firewall needs attention on this specific endpoint. Now we had a little insight into our new major Argus features from our version 2021 R2. As usual, try them out, give us feedback, tell us what you think, and further information can be found in our online documentation docs.baramundi.com. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching this video. If you need further information, just visit our website baramundi.com or don't hesitate to contact us. See you next time. Bye bye.